Welcome to Shakti's Gift, a podcast about creating a unique way of living. I'm your host, Marigold Era, Ayurvedic wellness coach, unschooling mother, and creative force. I think that life is a tapestry of all our stories, the good, the bad, the beautiful, the ugly, and everything in between. So in this podcast, I want to invite you to unleash your creativity and unveil yourself, your true self, so that we make this world a better place to live in. So grab yourself something to drink, get yourself comfortable, and let's dive deep into what the hell does it mean to be a human in this modern age and time. Hey, you guys. Welcome to Shakti's Gift. It's been a while since I posted an interview, but I'm back today with this amazing interview that I did with a colleague podcaster. Her name is Idaiber Orozco, and she is a coach. Uh, she works with human design, and she's also an actor and, of course, a podcaster. Um, she has so many talents and I had so much fun and lots of insight I have to say in in this interview with her so you're gonna listen to her sharing her story of how she started this fantastic podcast name Rekindle Your Light um, she talks about harnessing purpose and creativity in the wake of darkness which is so delightful is so important to still keep in touch with whatever light there is um in your life even though you're going through some really dark stuff or even not so dark but just like hitting the dip you know um so our podcast is very very good um we also explore the uh, emotion code which is uh, a modality that she uses as a coach, and it's very in interesting. Uh, I've never heard of it before, and I've learned so much about it. So you can, of course, reach out to her if you feel drawn to her. I left her link tree in the description down below. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, you guys, and I'll see you pretty soon. Well, actually, I'll see you in... Um, I'll see you every Wednesday from now on. I'm I'm actually back for um to publish uh some stuff that I actually recorded a while back and I wanted to honor that and I actually missed um being in front of my computer and editing stuff and and just being on social media. So I'm trying to manage family life and <laughs> podcasting. So, so yeah, so I hope you really enjoyed this episode. Leave me a comment uh, if you have any questions, if you're surprised by something, if you want to learn more about stuff, uh, let me know. And I wish you an amazing rest of your day, a great listening, and I'll see you soon. Much love. All right. <laughs> Hello. Hi, I'm so glad you're here. I'm I'm well, just thank you. Yeah, I'm so glad you're here. I was I was very uh eager to to meet you again and to talk a little deeper about um, you know, all the yes, things. All the things. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's an honor to be here. You know, I, I admire what you do a lot and, and I just love your energy. I told you that from the moment we met. So I'm yeah, looking forward to this chat. Yeah. All right. So let's start with your podcast. I loved it. It's just the way you're delivering it, it's just it's very good. It's it feels very professional. It feels like you've been doing that your whole life. Um. So yeah, oh, let's talk you. a little bit about like how oh, you came yeah. up with the name Rekindle Your Light. I love it. It's amazing. Yes, you know the the name definitely goes back to tying it to my bis to the name of my business. My business is called Rekindle Your Light, but the name of my business came because when my dad was transitioning from this realm, I heard the words, follow your light. Mm -hmm. And at first I didn't know what that meant. I just felt that there was some sort of message that he was leaving me. And, and honestly, it was not like I heard it with my physical ears. It was more like I saw the message written in my head somehow. Mm -hmm. And then after he passed, I started seeing lights everywhere. Like it was almost like I was seeing like flashes. Like if somebody was taking photos all day long, 
the day of his passing and honestly lasted for several days. And I was just like, this is just very weird. This is just very weird. And I put it aside, you know, while I process my, my emotions and my feelings. And when I started working again with my coach, I have a coach, um, because I do believe that coaches need coaching. <laughs> I, I was working with my coach and I told her about it. And I said, you know, I think, I think my dad wants me to do something and I still don't know what it is. Mm. And she said, well, let's put it aside. Let's work on, on processing the emotions. The, the focus at that moment was all about processing my emotions. And as the time progressed, I want to say probably about six months into it, I said to her, I think I want to do what you do. Mm. And she said, I've been waiting for you to recognize that you have the capacity to do this. So <laughs> I said, okay. And I'm like, and I think that's what my dad meant. I think my dad meant that I just needed to find again, what was that thing that was going to light me up again? Mm. What was that thing that was going to help me shine my light so that others could also shine their light? And I say, okay, I'm going to get certified. So I did what she was doing at the moment. She still does it, which is emotion code. I became certified as an emotion code practitioner. And from there, my practice kept growing into other iterations. And the podcast came to me. The idea of the podcast came to me because I was in a meditation during a retreat that I was doing in Austin. And it literally, it was a download. I literally heard speak, share your voice podcast like all those words and I started writing like I have pages and pages of the same thing of the same message and by the time the event ended it was a three-day event by the, the the time the event ended I grabbed the microphone and I said and I'm going to start a podcast and it's going to call rekindle your light and I had <laughs> no idea what that meant but I just said it and I think that allowed me to give myself accountability and say okay lady we'll how are you going to do this? And I'm like, I had no idea. This was back in June. And magically in August, I had the opportunity to sign up for Kathy Heller's class. And the rest is history. I launched my podcast in November. And I talk about harnessing purpose, great creativity in the wake of darkness. Because I feel like so many of us had hit rock bottom more than once. And it's like, well, when you are in those moments where you're literally on your knees, what do you do? How do you get out of that hole, right? And and I want to help people understand that there's tools, that there's community, that there's books, that there's messages, that there are practices, and everybody's going to approach their darkness however they want to approach it. But I want to create a space where people feel like, oh, this woman I know, she spoke about grief. Well, how did she deal with her grief? Hmm. Okay, Interesting. Well, how did this person dealt with her divorce and so forth and so on. So I'm approaching it from a very open mm -hmm. space because I feel like we all have experienced that darkness in one way or another, oh, in yeah. one degree or another. And so it could be as small as, you know, I was laid off from my job, which might be huge for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And it could be as big as, you know, my most recent episode is about a woman who lost her child to leukemia. Mm -hmm. And it's it's devastating. And at the same time, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's bringing that light and that beauty into these difficult conversations too. So that's what my podcast is about. And I, I love, love doing it so much. I honestly, I could do, I could do that just every day. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I think you kind of feel the same way because I notice how passionate you are about what oh, you yeah. do. Like, yep, I could do this. I could just chat with people all day and learn yeah. about their stories and share mine. And yeah, that's what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, I remember I was like, it was, I think it was in the pandemic at the beginning. I was talking with a lot of people online, you know, like this. And then at one point I was like, I need to get paid to do that. Like that, that's <laughs> what I need to do. Like, I mean, this is so fun. And I mean, like connecting with people like that and sharing our stories and getting to to know each other and to because, you know, when people are sharing their story, you learn so much about yourself as well, you know, because mm -hmm. some, something will reflect on you will like it will you, we can just relate to one another all the time. That's that's what surprises me all the time with doing this podcast, you know, it's like every time I speak with somebody, it's like, yes, I can relate to that, you know, and it's like yeah. I feel like I have like thousands of lives, you know. And but there's always something that we can actually relate to 
And I love the way you're, you're bringing it forward with the darkness and the light, because there is no light without the darkness. It's all exactly. like intertwined, right? And so we just need to be able to, to understand like what it is, that darkness, and to be able to not like stick to it, I think, but to be able yeah. to just like move through it. Move and... through it. And while we're in it, know that it's not, it's not it. Yeah. right that it, when you're in it it feels like that's it that's as stark as it's ever gonna get and i'm never gonna get out of this mm -mm -mm. but that is not the truth it feels like that it feels so heavy and so helpless and hopeless and i've been there i've been in those places where it's like nope there's no way out of this mm -mm. and then there's somehow some sort of reflection light message um, even even a, a social media post, something that you see that gets you out of that darkness, even if it's for a second, mm -mm. a phone call. And so it's like if we lean into the possibility that there is something else coming out of this darkness, then other things will start appear. It's literally like it just just things start moving, the energy starts moving. So yeah, it's okay to feel the feelings and sit on it because. We need, the, the body needs that too, right? We don't, we don't, we can't reject it because yeah. we persist, persist. So we, we can't reject it, but on with the understanding, it, that's when we got to incorporate a little bit of the logical mind that it's not going to stay there forever, right? Yeah. So it's, it's having that hope that yeah. as long as it needs to stay, we'll stay, but that we, we need to start taking action for things to move through. Yeah, to get yeah, to keep this awareness of like for me, the way I see it, it's like we live, we die, we live. Like it's it's always like that with in the little things and in the bigger things. And for me, I know that I, I experienced that uh at the very early age. My mother had passed away, I was like 17. And mm -hmm. that year was so crazy. I had like friends that died at that, you know, like around the same time. It was just so crazy. Like, um, but yeah, to be in contact with death like that and to realize that there is something after, you know, like you go through this pain and it's it's awful. It's it's really mm -hmm. not fun to to deal with. Yeah. I mean, it's it's awful. And then there's always something that will like birth after. Yes. You know, there's always something. So to keep that awareness, I feel like it's one key of the puzzle 100 percent, 100 percent, and with the understanding that there is going to be some sort of growth out of it there's going to be some sort of lesson out of it and if unfortunately if there's none it's going to repeat itself somehow yep. and i had to learn that lesson the hard way mm. because i wasn't paying attention because i was not aware mm -mm. i was just in victim mode, right? And why this is happening to me. Right. So I wasn't seeing the lesson and the love behind it. Therefore, some of these things had to be repeated for me to get them. Yeah, it, it's a process, right? Like for me, I know that at the beginning when I had like those really hard challenges, I was trying to numb myself to just like not mm -hmm. deal with it because it's just too painful and you don't want to go there and well, I was very young, so I wanted to party, you know, it was like, I, I, everybody was partying. I was just partying for the, not the, the same reason, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? So I don't know. You, I think you went through something like that as well. Numbing, numbing your pain. Yes. And... yes. That's why that's, that's what I mean when I said, you know, the lessons repeated, because for me, the lessons have come through death and mm. it sounds so tragic, but it does feel that tragic. So mm. my first death, was my sisters and it broke me it broke me in a way that of course I never expected that was going to happen but also it just it just put me in a in a in a place of I could not feel anything I was completely numb for years this was not even this was years mm -mm. and the thing that got me out of that place was art was acting and it was because my husband remembered that I, and we were boyfriend, girlfriend at the time. So he was not as invested as he is now, but he was <laughs> somehow invested enough that made him give me this push to say, why don't you go and audition for this theater company? They're holding auditions. It was close to our place. 
and it didn't feel like a like a like a chore it felt like oh that could be something different that could be something fun okay well let me see and that was it it's like I just started healing mm. through expressing myself and acting and performing and dancing and singing and I am not a singer but I didn't care I just mm. needed to have an outlet to get all of this pain out and it was the perfect outlet because then you're just pretending to be right. You're just a character, but no, it's literally, I was living through those moments, like everything that I just needed to get out. I just let it out and it helped me so much. And it changed my life that that decision changed my life because after that, I decided to become a professional actor and that has changed my life. So yeah. That's amazing. Just, I think that my light just went out. <laughs> I saw that. And mine too, which is so weird. That, that we're is talking about so light. weird. I know. And this is so weird. Both of us in different parts <laughs> of it. Of the, of the we're world. like on the opposite side of the continent. It's so it's weird. So I noticed weird. my lamp too. And I'm like, why is this lamp time <laughs> to go off at 10 a.m. in the morning? This makes no sense. <laughs> this is so <laughs> crazy. Um, I'm just going to go downstairs because I think there is a breaker that just like broke so yeah 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 go I'm just go gonna go fix to. it <laughs> and I'll be right back <laughs> yes go for it so random All right. <laughs> so weird. <sighs> All right. So I think I'm going to, I'm going to cut the thing, but I think I'm going to leave when we lost the light at the same time, because it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, it is funny. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, oh, there's some, wait a second. Mm -hmm. I think that's, my God, electricity, <laughs> energy, yeah. energy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> all right so like from there like I want to go into like the creativity because I relate to that so much that's why that's mm -hmm. the under title like the subtitle of the podcast it's unleash your creativity because it did the same for me when I started to paint for me it was painting mm -hmm. and when I started to paint there was like something shifted like I used to dance I was like dancing semi-professional mm -hmm. but when I started to paint something clicked, something was like, and I processed a lot of what happened in my life on canvas, on a, on one big canvas. And I was just like mm -hmm. throwing paints at it, you know? And, and um, yeah, I don't know, like creativity just like helped me so much, as you said, and for you, it was acting. So yes. yeah, you want to talk a little bit about like how you, Absolutely. yeah. Yeah, so first with me started with theater, but as I was, I think this is this is part of the human condition, right? We're doing one thing and then sometimes we don't know how we're going to get to the other side. All we know is that this thing in this moment is making you feel good. So it's like, well, how do I get more of that, right? That That's like, oh, I, I want more. I want this to be bigger. So I decided to start going to film and TV classes. So I enrolled in this other school. I started going to, and it was very, very intimidating for me because my theater classes were in Spanish and I feel very comfortable with that. <laughs> my film or TV classes were in English. I was completely out of my element. It was very difficult for me mm. and it was not a very nurturing environment actually. So I ended up 
moving to a different school and started working with a different coach. And when I was working with him, I think it was divine intervention, but he must have seen something. He must have gotten some whisper from someone that said to him, tell her that she's good at this. And because he said that, whether he meant it or not, because he said that, I gave myself a bigger dream. Mm -hmm. And I say, what if I can do this professionally? What if, what if I can get paid to act? Mm -hmm. that, that sounds cool. That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> and he said, I think you're wasting your time here. I was in Florida at the moment. Mm -hmm. And this is back in the day when there was no like virtual auditions or anything. You had to be in the room to be, to be considered for anything. And I said, yeah, but where am I going to go? And he said, well, have you think of New York or LA? And he was very pragmatic. You know, he, he was, a, I think at that time, I want to say maybe he was in his maybe forties or something, maybe even younger. And he was like, I don't know. You just grabbed your bags, then you go. And I'm like, yeah, but I have a career in the hospitality <laughs> industry. And then he's like, well, then you'll have a career in acting. It was to him, it was that simple. <laughs> and he said, I'll help you. I'll help you audition for one of the schools there. Just pick one. What do you want? And I say, uh, well, New York is closer. My logic. Well, New York <laughs> is closer. <laughs> so maybe New York. And he's like, okay, let's find a school. And we found a school. They had a summer program. And he said, oh, look, this one is doing auditions here in Orlando. So you don't even have to go there. They are hmm. coming to you. So we got ready. I prepare my Shakespeare monologue and I prepare my contemporary monologue and I got in. And not to discredit the school, but I think everybody got in or a lot of people got in. So. <laughs> <laughs> but so anyways, but that changed everything for me because once I had a taste of hmm. what it looked like to be in New York City and to be an actor, hmm. that was it. I was I mean. like, I want that. <laughs> I want to wake up every day to do that. So I did. I moved to New York City. I acted for many years. I went to school. I did a conservatory. And it was it was life changing because I was I was constantly processing my emotions through mm. art. I was constantly exposed to to human behavior. I, I got very curious about it. I, I became an observant of people. I became a witness of why people do things the way they did so that I, that could inform my creativity, that could inform my characters. And then the creativity kept growing because it's like, well, now I want to make films now. It's like, I want to be the one who says, what are we going to make it? How are we going to make it? So I told my husband, I said, do you want to make a film? And he's like, sure. So <laughs> he started taking some like editing classes and directing classes at NYU, like very like those adult continuation programs or something. Mm -hmm. And we put our, <laughs> our first film, film together. It was a short film. And yeah, we went to festivals. We just did it. We just did it. Nice. And I think, that, I think that that's how I have approached most of my life, especially my artistic life. I just do it. I just yeah. go for it. Even when I did the podcast, I just did it. I'm just like, yeah. I'm going to stop overthinking things. And I could get very precious about quality. I am like that. I just, I like, I like good things. Mm -hmm. I like quality over quantity I am very particular about it so with my acting I'm like that with so I'm not just gonna do a play that doesn't speak to my heart I, yeah. I'm, I'm not I'm not even if it's it's it has nothing to do with the money it's about the quality of the work yeah so it has to give me something artistically it, it has to transform me or transform people in certain way for me to be attracted to it so in New York, I was exposed to every kind of art that you can imagine. You know, there's the museums, there's their diversity of New York is so rich. Oh. That... And then, you know, New York is also a very tough city to live. So I, I had to manage living in a city that was so demanding energetically and also financially mm. and doing something that is not necessarily financially rewarding at first, right? Because I want to make something very clear. We have created this stigma that artists have to starve. And that is not true. That is something that we have to remove from our consciousness because we have repeated that to ourselves to make it acceptable mm -mm. for people to not necessarily be successful financially at something that they love to do. 
But what I have seen and what I have learned around the years is that there's a lot of people who are making a lot of money with their art. And it's not about that, right? But I just want to, I just, I just want to emphasize that I don't do what I do because of money. But let me tell you, it does help. It well, does yeah. help. Because when you get paid for something that you are creating, it's not like you need that external value to tell you that this is good because that doesn't mean anything. You can get paid and still could suck. Mm -mm. But it allows you to create more. Yeah. And that's all I want. I just yeah. want to, I, I want to wake up every day and create. And whether is it creating interactions, conversations, an episode together or studying my lines to audition or whatever is it that I'm creating. When I was in the hospitality business, I was creating menus. I was creating events. I was creating experiences. Creativity comes in so many different ways. I, I love cooking. I'm a really good cook, actually. I could have been a chef. And I think that the only reason why I was not a chef is because back then, a woman chef was not necessarily seen in Latin America, right? I grew up in Venezuela. Mm -mm -mm. Women were the cooks. They were never the chefs. So I'm like, oh, well, I don't want to do that, right? So anyway, I digress. But I am a really good cook. And sometimes I express my creativity that way. Because I'm not always acting. I don't always get the job. In fact, I almost never get the job. <laughs> so nobody does. So when I'm not in that creative process, I have to express my creativity in other ways. I have to have an outlet. So I express it through cooking. I express it through decorating. You express it through fashion, I can see. So it's like, there's so many different ways that we can express creativity yeah. to keep us excited about life. Yeah, it's crucial. It's crucial. Mm -hmm. As human, as you said, like there's so many ways. Like it's not because we're not artists and we're not like painting or acting or dancing or like in front of a camera, like saying stuff, but just like being a mom, like you got to be in your creative side because you got to be interacting with those beings and you got to just like help them find who they are and just like go with you know mm -hmm. what, what are their interests and you get to be creative in that but there's always something as you said being anything like it could be gardening yeah. it could be anything you know anything and even even you know um sometimes I like to refer refer us more more as creators versus creatives because we're mm. constantly creating something and my last job like my because sometimes I have I have jobs that allow me to keep my creativity going longer. So I will take on jobs. And this last job lasted a lot longer than what I expected. I ended up working with this company for five years mm. and it was in finance. So you tell me what is creative about finance. <laughs> Nothing, right? <laughs> However, I remember they brought in an expert one day to one of our meetings and the theme was actually creativity. And I was frustrated because it was like, well, listen, I work in finance, like a, we don't want to be creative in finance, right? We want to keep things straight. So how do I express my creativity at my job? Because it's very important for me. And he said something that really stayed with me, which was, it's not about creativity, but it's about how do you create processes, steps, systems that are more efficient, that are better, that are more automated, so you can express your creativity that way because you're creating things that mm. are just going to be better for your job. And that was exciting because it was like, ooh, I can totally tap into that. I can totally tap into that. And what I loved about that job is that it allowed me to use the other side of my brain, right? Because I'm always in this creative thing. And I am also a very analytical person. I'm very good with numbers. And I was mm. like, this balanced me so well. Yeah. But uh, so what my invitation to your listeners is, even if you're working in accounting, there are ways to create something. And if you're unable to express that at your job, make sure that there's some sort of outlet outside of it because we all need it. We all need to be creating something. Yeah. The minute we're not, I feel like for myself, I know that in my experience, I feel like I'm dying if I'm not creating yeah. something. It's just like everything feels dull and heavy and, you know, purposeless. It's just yeah. like, it's like, it's hard to get up in the morning if I don't know that I'm going to be creating something. And if I don't stay connected to that, that creative process, whatever it looks like on that day, 
like, I know I'm going to have a bad day. That's for sure. Yes. Yes. And even, you know, even if we approach it from a place of curiosity and learning, right. Because sometimes mm. we don't know what is it that we want to create. Right. We just, have, we just have that inkling that something is stuck, that we, we're just not having any momentum and things are just the routine is just the same and there's nothing mm. fun. There's nothing that is really lighting us up or whatever it is. Then that's when I would say, go and explore. What is it that might pique your curiosity? It could be a book that you start reading and it takes you into a totally different direction and it takes you, it opens your mind to something else. So it's like that, that awareness of like, oh, I could, I could do something else with this, or I could learn about something else. You don't even have to create something, but it's like, oh, I could learn about something else. And that already is going to put you in a different mindset. Yeah. And like from all the people you've met and all the people you've coached, like, is there like a, a moment where you're, you're just like lost into that darkness and like there's something coming up? How do you get back in touch with that, that creativity? You know, like when you're in that deep, dark, moment where you're not like able to relate to any of that you know yeah you start small you have you start very 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 small little these baby steps mm. I remember when my when my dad passed I I felt like my biggest nightmare came true right because I even told that to someone today I said I think I was preparing for my dad's death since I was a kid Because I think as a kid, the biggest fear is to lose your parents, right? Mm. And I think I grew up with that fear and I never let go of it. It was constantly that fear that something was going to happen to me, that something was going to happen, something was going to happen, completely being hyper vigilant. Mm -hmm. So when it happened, it's like, well, lady, look, it took over 40 years, but here it is. The thing that you were the most afraid of happened. So what now? And at that moment, I don't know why, but I had this inkling of wanting to express my feelings to him and I decided that I was going to start writing to him I am not a writer but that I was going to write to him a memory or something that came up that day and I did that for several days I don't know if it was a week or two weeks I don't remember exactly for how long I did it so I went into his Facebook page like a crazy woman And I said, I'm just going to share something that only us know about. And it was so, so healing for me to do that. It was so beautiful. And I remember I had people from all over telling me how much that not only took them in a journey of understanding my relationship, my relationship with him, but also almost going into their own journeys and witnessing what have they done to express their love to someone that they miss or someone that they still have in life right you don't have to wait until somebody's gone to say these things yeah and I was sharing I was sharing pictures and I was talking to him as if it was direct conversation I I wouldn't write like when my dad no I say oh dad remember when we did this together Remember how beautiful it was that day? You know, my dad does. I always reminded him of this, of this memory that it was a core memory for me. He went to pick me up one day in school and he never picked me up in school. He was always working. And he say, let's go to the beach. And I was like, oh, it's like a Wednesday. <laughs> and he's like, let's just go to the beach. And he was wearing jeans and probably, I don't know, a polo shirt, whatever he was wearing. And he went we got to the beach and he went and caught his jeans and he made shorts with it so that he could go in the ocean with me. That's and amazing. it's like one of the most beautiful memories I have of him. And when I share that story, people are like, that is, that is so beautiful, right? Like something so simple that he, and he couldn't remember later in life that he had done that for me or with me. He couldn't remember. He's like, I did that. I said, yes, dad. <laughs> so anyways, That would be my recommendation, right? You start connecting with those little things that somehow awaken your love, awaken your joy, even if they feel so small. You know, sometimes the, the biggest thing you can do is just, if you, have a, if you have an animal, if you have a dog, if you have a cat, you know, even if it's just taking care of that animal gives mm. you purpose, right? Yeah. It seems something so basic, but it's like, well, if you don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. 
So that already is going to push you out of your darkness because you have to take care of something else, of someone else. Yeah. Within yourself to be of service, mm. it's a magical medicine for anything. Yeah. If you reach out to anyone and say, listen, I know that you've been struggling with this. How's that going? How are you feeling? Is it better? We'll just want to make sure that you know that I'm here for you. Mm. These little things, these little tiny acts of kindness, they can be so small. But the moment that you take the pressure from yourself and the and the emphasis on your grief, on your pain, on your darkness, and put it on something else or on someone else, mm. your heart starts opening. And when your when your heart starts opening and you start expressing that, however you can translate that to your own life, right? We're not all extroverts. We're all not going to go and get on stage. So we, you don't need to do that. Yeah. It's small, tiny acts of love, mm. of joy that you can start experiencing. And I think that's going to, that's what is going to eventually get you out of that hole is that little tiny step that you take every day. And you're going to feel really good too when you're helping someone else, when you're expressing that you care for someone else. Mm. It's, inevitably it's just going to cause that that cause and effect yes I love that it's so true it's so true I I know as like for me as a mother like I know that every day I'm, I get to help them you know mm -hmm. and you're right it's just like so fulfilling to be there for them those mm -hmm. little being <laughs> you know yeah. and to see that as an act of service you know yes. instead of like maybe some parents like we can get overwhelmed and maybe like see start seeing it or even with with pets it can be like can become like a chore you know yeah but then when you reconnect yourself with that uh that sense of service and giving to other people or other being it's just like shifted it shifts some something you know right yeah it's so simple you know a couple of days ago I think it was yesterday actually my husband was um he does a lot of vacuuming in the house he's the one that does a lot of it a lot of that stuff and i'm so grateful that he's that kind of man and he's you know he's doing it and then he's like rrr, 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 look at all this hair and i say okay just stop for a second i say what does it mean that there's so much hair in the house and he just look at me blank i say that means we have two fur babies that uh -huh. we get to take care of that means that we have so much love because those two fur babies are around that means that i have hair that means that you have hair so the little things that we should be grateful for that instead of complaining about or nagging about, he wasn't complaining, he was nagging, I don't know, look at all this hair. <laughs> and I'm like, how fortunate we are that we get to do this. Mm -hmm. Not that we have to do this, but that we get to do this. Yeah, I love that. It's so true. It's so true. I want to mm -hmm. talk about um, emotion code. You just like my curiosity was like lighting up when you, <laughs> when I heard you talking about this because I know a lot of like modality to heal and to deal with your emotion, but I've never heard of this one. So I'm super curious about it. So you want to share mm -hmm. a little bit about it? Sure, sure. Yeah. So emotion code is the technique that helped me, you know, back in, let's talk about, I think this was 2020 when we all were going through what we we're all we were going through. Oh, yeah. And, and I was feeling trapped. Mm. I had I had a job. I was very fortunate that I, you know, a lot of people lost their jobs. I still had my job. We made a transition to work from the office to work at home. Mm. But I was overwhelmed. You know, it was it was new. Everything was new for me. So imagine, you know, at first doing finance from your house with all that paperwork and files and things and I was living in a very tiny one up bedroom apartment in LA and it was just too much I was feeling yeah. so overwhelmed and I remember I saw a friend of mine on social media right because we were not seeing people at that time and I say dude you look good you look really good <laughs> and he's like oh my god I gotta tell you about this woman she does emotion code I'm like I have no idea what you're talking about and he's like here read the book and if it resonates, let me know and I'll put you in contact with her. So I devour that book. Mm -hmm. So the book is the book and the technique is about healing. It's about removing trapped emotions that we have gotten stored in our bodies for years, years. generations. Yeah. That have been inherited to us that we didn't ask for, but we have it. So it taps into your subconscious in order to get those emotions removed and transformed and letting them go 
so that we can open space for the emotions that we really want to have and experience more of, right? Joy, happiness, and all of these things. Mm -hmm. So my first session with this woman, so I read the book like in a day, I, I listened to it. I sign up with this woman right away. And my first session with her, I have never in my life met her before. Never seen her. We were not friends on social media, nothing. She know, She knew nothing about me. <laughs> and she explains the process. I already had an idea because I have read the book. And the first emotion, she taps into my subconscious and she says, okay, I'm just going to tap into your subconscious, which sounded so weird, right? I'm just going to tap into your subconscious. And then she, we have a chart. There's a chart of about 60 emotions. And you're basically asking, and you can do this through muscle testing, or in my case, I use a pendulum. She uses a pendulum as well. That's how I liked, uh, that's how I learned. So that's how I like to do in my mm -hmm. sessions. And the pendulum shows you what emotion is the one that needs to come out, right? Yeah. So she does this on me. And the first emotion that comes out is grief. And I just burst it into tears because I could not believe that she would know that i'm mm. like well, how do you know and she's like i don't know it's your subconscious is doing this so to me it sounded like this is too woo woo this is weird <laughs> but then everything that was coming up made so much sense it just made so much sense and i felt so much lighter afterwards and mm. i started feeling that yeah like a weight ha was being lifted and i would mm. see her at the beginning i was seeing her on a weekly basis then it went down to two times uh, a month and then once a month for maintenance kind of thing. And then when my dad passed, then I started seeing her again. And, you know, now I see her on and off. But that that's why that was the technique I wanted to learn first because he helped me so much. Mm. I remember that, you know, I had been with her probably for about three months. This was like, yeah, I started with her around Thanksgiving. So by January, then I was the one who was getting the comments you look so good. Like your <laughs> energies, you're glowing girl. And I started to book more acting work. Like I was just like so magnetic. Like everybody was just, there was just like this attraction that people were just like, what girl, you, yeah, I, li I liked your vibe. And there was something that became very, very magnetic. And then, you know, that was like January and then February, my dad died. So it was oh almost like, God. I like I felt like all the work that I had done, it was going to be gone. And then my coach was like, it's okay. We'll just keep clearing. We'll just keep working on it. So it's a process, you know, because we're experiencing emotions constantly. constantly. And sometimes they get trapped without us even realizing. Sometimes it has nothing to do with you. Sometimes you could watch something on TV that is so traumatic that that emotion gets stuck in your body because you were horrified by something that you watch. So that's why we got to be super careful about the content, what that we consume, the things that we watch, because it does affect the way that our nervous system reacts to this mm. thing. So yeah, so that's in a nutshell what emotion code is. Do you think that when emotions are trapped, it can like lead to illness or? 100%. Yes. As a matter of fact, in the emotion code, there's the next version of emotion code or the upgraded version is the body code. So they go, I haven't done it myself, but I haven't done it as a coach. I've done it as a client. They go into further studies into what those emotion, emotions could be causing in certain parts of the body, and then they get to clear. But even with just the basic emotion code, if you just read that first book, it tells you what each emotion is connected to in what part of the body. Mm. So I remember I that, that I remember that I was having a particular emotion. Well, uh, let's let's talk about grief because it's probably one of the easiest ones to to explain. Mm. And grief is connected to the heart. Well, well yeah. guess what? I've been I've been dealing with having pain around my heart area for about a year now. And at first, you know, again, I could be very pragmatic, so I was like, let me get all the tests done. This is something, there, there has to be something off with my heart. There has to be something wrong. I ended up doing a past lives a regression yeah. about a month ago. Yeah. And we think the regression, my dad came through in one of the, in one of the visions that the visualizations that we did. And the guide is asking me, 
to ask my dad anything that I want to ask him. And I asked my dad, what's going on with my heart? And my dad said to me, there's nothing wrong with your heart. And he put his hand in my heart and say, there's just a lot of pain that still needs to be processed. There's still a lot of things that you need to let go of. Which, of course, I mean, I cry for days after hearing <laughs> that, right? The day, the week after that, I got my CT scan, my heart CT scan. I had been waiting for it for so long. And it was confirmed that there was nothing wrong with my heart. And I, I that's just an example of how much emotions. And I'm not saying that there's nothing wrong with something else, hey? Like, I do not discount any. This is not medical advice. Like, I will still encourage you. If there's something that you're feeling that is off, you better go check everything, right? But also energetically, obviously, there's something that I still need to process. But I got to tell you, since then, the pain has subsided so much. Like, I still have it. But it's very mild. It still mm-hmm. reminds me sometimes that it's there. And it's just like, oh, it's back. <laughs> um, but it keeps me also aware, right? Yeah. It, it's one of these things that sometimes I'm trying, instead of nagging about it, I'm saying, oh. It's just reminding me to come back into the moment mm-hmm. and notice what am I doing? What did I eat? How did I sleep? What stressed me out? Like I got to go to almost through the list and yeah. see like, huh, it could have been that I ate sugar today. Okay, I got it. You know, like you start just becoming more aware and it brings you back to the present. So I'm not going to say it's a gift because it does not feel like that, but it's just this thing that life brings to you sometimes because again there's a lesson that still hasn't been fully learned yeah and I have a really hard time doing emotion code on myself like I am I I have clients and we have an amazing time and they feel amazing (laughs) but every time I'm not kidding you I try to do it on myself my pendulum refuses to move it does not move oh my god okay that's when I have to call my coach and be like, hey, girl, <laughs> hey, girl, I need you. <laughs> oh, my God, that is so funny. I always believe that our bodies are never lying. And when we get something, like when we feel something in our body, like pain or discomfort or something, you know, there's like, it's like a sign our body is telling us, you know, like, hey, maybe take a second to just like reevaluate what you're doing right now, you know, or what you're, what you've been doing for years exactly. or, yes. or for weeks or for months or whatever, you know, but there's always, the body's always like trying to signal us when we're lacking in awareness, you know, it's like, it's, we're, we're a team. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like that book, uh, which I have not read fully because it's, it's rather dense, but the body keeps a score. Yes. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. super dense m- m- book, but yeah, it's so interesting. It's so interesting when when my mother passed away. She was sick for five years, and I was very young. I was twelve when she started, yeah. you know. And I was like, I don't know. It's like I had this intuition inside of me that she needed to tell something, and I started to have like those dreams about like what she might have been through you know in her life and I, I was like having all of those download downloads that I didn't know what it was because I was super young and I but now that I look back I'm like oh my god something was definitely happening and and I remember trying and I had like an a person in my family that was also believing in something like that and she was trying to help my mother processing stuff mm-hmm. like old trauma trend transgenerational stuff yeah. stuff that she actually went through in her life and she was so closed up mm. around that and she was like suffering so much and you know I it always like it stood with me like it stuck with me to mm. just like combine you know the feminine and the masculine and yes yes the medicine yes you know yes of course you have cancer yes you go to the doctor and you you do what you can do but I, I always felt like if you don't deal with the energy, the emotion, all of the other stuff, the feminine stuff, it will not heal. It would not just like heal properly, you know, like it would just like come back all the time because we need to be both of those energy. Yes, to really, yes 100%. You know, even, even, you know, we forget sometimes, but 
mother nature is there for a reason, right? And we need to do anything we can to stay connected with nature consistently. This yeah. is not like, a, oh, I went, oh yeah, I went to the park in December. No, 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 no. Like every day, what are you doing to connect with earth? Are you grounding? Are you breathing outside? Are you receiving, you know, for those of us who have the luxury of having sunshine almost every day of the, of the year, right? Are you getting that into your, into your pupils? Are you getting exposure to sun? Are you getting exposure to the sound of the birds, of the sounds of the ocean, of the sound of the wind? Yeah. All of those things are so healing. And, and I think it's just a matter of, it has to be very intentional. So everything that we do, it has to be very intentional. And, and that is part of my practice that I, I try, I try my best to stay connected to, to that, to that important relationship with earth and with mm. mother nature. Oh yeah, definitely. That's why I fell in love with Ayurveda because it's like, it's, you know, they, they say it's the science of life and it's always in relationship with nature because we're made of that nature, you know, we're made yeah, of, you know, bones and like, you know, flesh and, and we can all relate those parts of our body to different elements, you know, in nature and to be connected with nature. And I feel like we lack that in, in our medical system, you know, mm -hmm. like there's like this, this pragmatic, place that uh, you know knowledge that we all need sometimes at times and there's also the other uh the other no knowledge you know and and that's what i i fell in love with ayurveda because they were just like putting everything together and like just putting everything in in perspective and nature is like we eat nature yeah <laughs> it's, it's medicine like, yeah it's, it's medicine. like we eat it you know mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like so we better be in touch with it for for yes. what I understand, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, nature, creativity, I mean, our emotion. <laughs> yeah. And one thing feeds the other, right? Because, yeah. the, the, and, and it, you know, I think this is what I'm going to throw in a little bit of human design as well, but it's going to depend on everybody's type. But in general, when you go out, whether it's to nature or to something that stimulates you artistically, let's say a movie, mm -hmm. uh, theater play, anything you always, always come back home interested in creating something or in, in expressing that or sharing it. Sometimes it's just about telling people, I got to tell everyone about this movie that I watched. Oh my God, it was so good. <laughs> and you can't stop thinking about it. You can't stop talking about it. So it's like one thing informs the other. So nature is, does, has that same power. You go outside and you're refreshed and you're ready to tackle your task or you're ready to sit down and write a book for all you know you're so inspired so figure out what is your way to get inspiration from and then connect to that so when I was referring to human design which for those of for those people who don't know about human design human design combines science with astrology and Kabbalah and chakra system and for me oh, it's is. a system that has allowed me to connect with my authentic self more than any other system because I learned so much about the way that I'm supposed to be doing things, the way that I'm supposed to be making decisions, the way that I'm supposed to be interacting with the world, that the more we're aligned with those things, somehow things start flowing in different ways. So part of my design is that a lot of my, my inspiration comes to me in silence so mm -hmm. it's more an internal process. It's more like quiet down, sit down and process things. But for, for a lot of people, it's go outside and get your inspiration outside. So it's a benefit regardless of how you process the ideas and how you process inspirations to be out there. But it's almost like I see it, I get it, but then I almost have to sit with it and go through it. And it's like, oh yeah, that was delicious or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. We have to do another another episode where we go really deep into human design. I love I just love this modality. I've I've been studying it like on my own term and nice. I don't know, it's just like it's so precise. It's just like, it's oh my fascinating. god. It's, it's fascinating. It's fascinating and there's so much nuance to it as well. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine this morning and I was asking her I'm like, "Oh, do you happen to know what is your environment in human design?" because she was she was 
sharing that she's so cold to live close to the mountains. And I say, oh, I'll be curious to see what your human design says about your environment. And she's like, oh, I don't know. I say, oh, I'll look it up for you. So it's like, <laughs> I guess I'm giddy about these things because sometimes you don't realize that you have these this connection to something that feels so real and so authentic. My husband has that with mountains mm. and he's like, oh, Switzerland, the Alps. And I'm like, no way, <laughs> way, no, that is just not me at all. My environment is about markets. It's about diversity, it's about noise, it's about cities, lights, and we couldn't be more different in that sense. So, but it's, 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 it's a good thing to know. The more you know about yourself, just the better you, you function, the better you carry your life. So that's yeah. all to, that is the purpose of any of these modalities, right? You could, there's, like you say, there's so many. So many. You've got to find what connects with you, what resonates, and then just explore and be open to, to what these things get to offer to you, which at the end of the day is for you to live a better life. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So let's say like the end, like, what would be like the first step when you encounter an emotion? Like what would be the first step? Just like deal with it. Sit with it first. You got to sit with it first. I think having that awareness of even knowing what, what this is and where is this coming from? Because sometimes we feel things and sometimes they're not even ours. Mm -hmm. You don't even know where this is coming from. And it could be that, somebody else made you ang angry and you're like well why am I allowing this person to make me angry why is my response to this resentment you know it's like that when you start questioning these things when you start sitting with it sometimes you realize that you don't even need them that you can just let them go <laughs> so but let's assume that it's a difficult one right let's assume that it's something that did happen to you and it's something mm -hmm. that it's is your emotion you're feeling you're devastated because you lost your pet, mm. right? And you have all the right to feel whatever you need to feel through that process. The first thing is allow yourself to be there. Just cry, just connect with whatever. It doesn't have to be tears, right? You, it, everybody reacts differently to, to things. But what is that for you? Are you angry? Are you, are you grateful that this pet is no longer in pain? Are you grateful for all the beautiful lives and memories that you have? Well, sit with that. Just sit with it. Just allow those emotions to be present. Don't don't avoid them because then they get stuck. They get trapped. And then that could cause a lot of other things that we discussed. So I would say that would be the first, first, first step. And then start looking when the time is right. Start looking for how to get out of it by start taking a small, tiny actions. Connect with your heart. Mm. You know, I think that as I'm telling you this, I'm putting my hand on my heart. Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's the way I see it, right? It's like we process so many things through our mind that sometimes we don't allow to just feel it and mm. truly say, this feels heavy. And I don't know how am I going to get out of this right now. So mm. I'm just going to, I'm just going to take it easy. I mean, you you know, Ayurveda, you know, you go into that kapha mode, which is like, I'm just going to stay inwards. Mm, mm, I'm just mm. going to, I'm just going to make me a nice hot beverage. And I'm just going to connect with, my intuition i'm just going to connect with my inner thoughts mm. i'm just going to connect with my heart i'm going to journal i'm going to take a nap i'm just going to get in cozy clothes and just stay in yeah and then when you start feeling better you start peeling off those layers right and then you want to be out and then you want to get some of that sunshine in your face and then you want to wear happier colors and but again you, your intuition knows all of these things mm. you just gotta sit and listen and see what is it that wants to come through. Mm, mm, mm. I love that. I love that so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. It was so amazing to have you. And as I said earlier, I would love to have you again to talk about yeah. uh, human design. I, I think it's it's uh, it's an episode on its own because there's so much to say around that. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Well, we gave it a little taste so people can get curious. Yeah. About it. like, what? <laughs> I've never heard of this. What is, what is it? Yes. <laughs> and you can look it up and you can at least, you know, people can start looking at, you know, Google in their charts. They might not understand anything about it. But like you said, there's a lot of uh, books that you can, if you're oh, one yeah. of those people who likes to go into studying any of that, there's a lot of books, there's a lot of resources out there. 
And if not, you know, I do readings. There's a lot of people who do readings. So, so always use your resources. Use your resources to the best of your ability. There's a lot of people around who want to help. Yeah, that's for sure. So how do people uh, connect with you? Instagram, is that like the best way for you? Yeah, yeah. Instagram is just my name, Adi Diver. And as long as you spell it correctly. And I'm the only, <laughs> I'm the only diver in the world. So it's very easy to find me. <laughs> And then I do have a website called Rekindle Your Light. My podcast is Rekindle Your Light. So it's very easy to, to find me and get in touch. And I would love to support your listeners in any way. That Yeah, that that's for sure. Yeah, I'm going to link everything anyway down below so that people can, you know, click so it's easier. Thank well, thank, well thank, thank you for having so me. much, thank you for your it awesome was, questions. It was amazing <laughs> to have you. <laughs> thank you so much for listening. I appreciate that you're here with me. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, review, and share this episode with people you think might benefit from it. If you need support with your lifestyle and well-being, feel free to reach out to me. It will be my pleasure to help you with an Ayurvedic consultation. You can go to my website, marigolera.com, to book a session with me. Remember, in the wisdom of Ayurveda, self-care is not a luxury, but a sacred responsibility and a journey of nurturing oneself to foster holistic well-being. I wish you an amazing rest of your day. Much love to you. And I'll see you in the next episode.